Good y'all fusion here, back with another video. Uh, today we're gonna be reacting to some first take. Um, Stephen A. Smith is gonna be talking about the 76ers and um, some bull, uh, some Celtics and Bucks conversations as well. Um, who he thinks will be making it out of the East. Personally, I had either the Celtics or the Bucks. I feel like they have um, great scoring options as well as their scorers do play defense. I think that's um, something that will push either one of those teams over. Um, I'm not completely sold on the 76ers yet. Personally, I don't believe in James Harden yet. I feel like he hasn't proven to us yet that he can play a full playoffs successfully. He only plays maybe one or two... Um, one or two series, and then he acts like he just can't play the ball. Uh, can't play basketball anymore. So I still don't have faith in him. But this is a big season for Embiid and James Harden. I think it's important for them to win this one. I think this will be a... Um, I think Philadelphia will make huge changes if they aren't successful here. I think Doc Rivers. I think... Tyrese Maxey, I think um, James Harden, I think Tobias Harris. I think those few names that I did name will could be on a on their way out if this isn't a successful season. So, uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started and see what they got to say here. Ninth straight dub tonight, and the only thing standing in their way, Chicago Bulls. Philly's last win versus Indiana MVP frontrunner Joel Embiid accounted for 31. The Pacers, with major help from Maxi and Tobias Harris as well, the race for the one seed of the East heating up as the Sixers win. As we just talked about, nine of their last 10 games have closed the gap with the struggling Celtic squad who has gone just seven and six since the All Star break. Both teams, however, still two and a half games back behind the first place Bucks, who are in the number one spot thanks to an incredible. 16 game win streak that spanned from January 23rd all the way until March 1st. Kendrick Perkins back with us gracing your screen. Let me go back just real quick. In reality, these are the only competitive quote unquote teams in the Eastern Conference. I feel like uh, the Bucks have a great team all the way down. Uh, the 76ers have a great team all the way down and the Celtics have a great team all the way down. I feel like these three are the teams to watch in the East. I don't see any of these teams losing in the first round. I will say that the 76ers, who are they playing against in the first? If they were playing today, uh, if the playoffs started today, they're in the second seed, they'll be playing, they'll be playing Miami. I think that'll be an interesting game. I want to say the 76ers will beat Miami, but Jimmy Butler will always be a wild card when it comes to the playoffs because his style of play is very uh, balanced. He knows how to get his team evolved. He plays great defense and he can score when needed. I think when it comes to playoff time, there's that's when you see peak. That's usually when you see peak Jimmy when he is, uh, when it's playoff time, when it's actually time for us to sit down and play, that is something that he can do. And I think it'll be interesting for the 76ers. I, I still think the 76ers will beat this, um, beat Miami, but I think it's going to be a good series. March 1st. Kendrick Perkins back with us, gracing your screen. Hey, Perk. SA, I'm going to start with you, though. What's up? Who should the Sixers fear more? Is it the Bucks or the Celtics? Well, to me, the Sixers should fear the Sixers should fear the Celtics. Okay. I think that the Sixers are, 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 are built to compete against the Milwaukee Bucks. Here's how I look at it, KP, Big Perk. I believe that the Sixers um, are a tough matchup for Milwaukee, but I think the Celtics have the Sixers number. I think the way that I'm seeing the Celtics this year and you and I have gone back and forth really, really agreeing for the most part on that Missoula component compared to Ime Udoki and what he brought to the team last year. 
I really think that when you look at the Boston Celtics, what we've been seeing as of late compared to Milwaukee, I think Milwaukee could take Boston. All right. They'd have home field, home court advantage. You know, a game seven would be on their court. I think it would work in their favor. Whereas in B and the 76ers going up against Milwaukee, I think that would be tougher for Milwaukee. But for some reason, when it comes to Philly, Boston seems to have their number. That's my thinking with that. I'm going to say the 76ers should have a very good matchup against the Celtics more than the Bucks, based off of just Joel Embiid. I don't think the S- Celtics centers or other big men can hold Joel Embiid. Um, well, shouldn't be able to hold like Joel Embiid to a certain extent. It really just depends on if James Harden can feed Joel Embiid and if he plays great. I think there's not many big men who can defend him because his back to the back I mean his back to the basket game is great he can shoot he's um he has the ability to take you off of the dribble of the face up move he can shoot the three he's hard to defend that being said I think of Brook Lopez because I do think he's a little bit bigger than then Joel Embiid could at least keep him down in, in the paint, at least by putting a big body on him. But once he gets outside the outside of the paint, put Giannis on him. Giannis is quick enough, strong enough, has the athleticism, has has the length to defend someone like that. Um, Chris Middleton, put him on James Harden. Chris Middleton has the... Because I think what people don't realize with James Harden, not only does he have great ball handling, great core vision, great shooting... He's strong as hell. He's a thick guy. Uh, pause. He, he's not muscular, but he's he's a big guy. So it would be hard for you to put a normal shooting guard on him. You would need someone with some length, with some weight on them. Um, the Bucks got Drake, um, got Drake Crowder, another big uh, guy who could also defend James Harden. And I think that's what makes the, the Bucks better. One thing that they were missing besides, uh, well, they were missing some shooting. Uh, their bench wasn't the best. Bobby Porters is playing well. Introducing Jay Crowder, who can hit a couple threes, but his main job is to help Giannis with the defensive side. Perfect against the Celtics, who have a small forward and a two guard, be it Jason Tatum and um, Jalen Brown, respectfully, they can do a lot. So adding another Jay Crowder, adding, um, having Bobby Portis playing better, uh, Chris Middleton, Giannis, they have a good defensive structure. Uh, Drew Holiday as well. Great defense, adding even more defense to a uh, guard-led team by the Celtics, I think that that's just a much much better matchup. But I still think the 76ers have too many what-ifs on their team. What if James Harden um, reverts back to old James Harden and just gets 30, just off of pure step-backs? That's something that he can do. What if Tyrese Maxey plays well? He'll get you at least 26 when he's playing well. That's the X factor. What if Tobias Harris finally figures it out? He has the he has the perfect like perfect body type. He can shoot, he can finish. Um, he does lack a little bit on like um, the defensive side, but he is athletic enough to play solid defense. He should be getting you at least fifteen or sixteen quality buckets a, a game. That is what he should be doing. And if he can figure that out, I think the 76ers team will be hard to beat. But there are too many what ifs. That's my only thing with the 76ers. And that was long winded. Well, but let's go ahead and continue here. Well, well, here's the thing, right? The biggest word in this whole conversation is health. And when I look at a Philly and Boston matchup, 
I'm gonna right, skip because I, I feel like health is always important in playoff position and for and like for every team. So I feel like that's always implied. Um, I think that the only time where health would be a reasonable thing to pull up, um, like to bring up, is if you are talking about the Lakers with um, Anthony Davis always being injured. The Clippers, who always had Kawhi Leonard always being injured. Um, you know, teams who have known to have people who will just get injured from walking up the stairs. With these with these three teams, they have learned how to keep or Joel Embiid healthy and not um, hurt as often. Same thing with Giannis. Same thing with uh, with the two guards in, in Boston. They have figured it out. Line. And we talk about Giannis Antetokounmpo, we know how dominant he is, but let's not forget what Brooke Lopez has been doing this season. And Bobby Porter's coming in off the bench averaging 13 and 8. So when I look at those three, and I look mm. at Joel Embiid and him have to basically go 103 in that series, I don't know if he's going to be able to sustain that level of play and contact in the seven game series going against those guys because I haven't seen enough out of Paul Reed. He's been so inconsistent in the minutes that he's played. Montrez Harrell, him and Doc can't seem to get on the same page for nothing. I thought he was going to be a great addition to the Philadelphia 76ers, but he hasn't risen to the occasion. So when I look at the matchups and I look at the health part of it, when it comes down to the Celtics, because again, Remember this, Jason Tatum said it himself, the most important piece to us trying to complete our goal is Robert Williams. And we haven't seen him healthy enough on a consistent basis to have trust that he's going to be available, especially as they get deeper into the round. Well, I forgot about Robert Williams uh, for, uh, for, uh, for the Celtics. Um, he brings a lot of energy, and I think energy is important for a guard-led team like the Celtics, um, as well as their bench players like, I want to say his name is Grant Williams. Um, last year, he hit some crazy threes. He had like a, a like random 30-pointer where he hit like six or seven threes. That's crazy. That's not going to happen often. But since energy and those type of players, the uh, like the role players or like the players who come off the bench they need to feed off of those highlight plays off of the energy from somebody who gets a great offensive rebound or something like that they feed off of that so i forgot about robert williams i think robert williams with the celtics can definitely beat the 76ers but without him i don't know well, listen, I don't, I don't disagree with you there. Trust is an issue. There's no doubt about that, particularly when it comes to the health of Robert Williams III. And I get all of that. But what I'm saying about Boston is this. Boston has tailed off a little bit. I'm looking at Milwaukee. I'm looking at how physical they can play. Brooke Lopez is having a sensational season. Giannis is Giannis. We know he's an MVP candidate. By the way, I'm going to give some love to Sabonis out in Sacramento just making a left turn. Yeah, he's second there. Yeah, playing you know, great. I, mean, I look at him right now, averaging 19 and 12, you know, shooting the way he shoots, playing the way that he's playing, being as consistent as he's been with Sacramento being a top two, top three seed in the Western Conference. Sabonis, he ain't going to win MVP. He ain't even a top three candidate. But top five candidates in league MVP, Sabonis so deserves to be mentioned in that conversation. We need to give him his props. Now, getting back to Milwaukee, here's my thing. Milwaukee, as big as they are, as physical as they can be, remember, K Big Perk, Joel Embiid, in terms of his health, it's not about the physicality because he's big enough, bigger than practically everybody on the court all the damn time. And in terms of muscle, he can muscle his way around. Where he gets himself into trouble is when you ask him to run up and down the damn court all the time. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? When you're running up and down the court with those foot injuries from years ago and whatever, and the knees and stuff like that, the more he runs, the more problematic it is potentially for him. To, for me, when I think about Lopez and the kind of Achilles heel he is to an opposing offense, all right, that doesn't, that doesn't phase Joel Embiid. 
He'll rise to that occasion. It's about Harden. It's about uh, it's a, it's a, it's about Harden. It's about Maxi. It's about Tobias Harris and those brothers stepping up. I just think that Philadelphia can answer the call against Milwaukee, but for some reason, against Boston, Boston seems to have their number. And Boston plays too fast. They run the ball. Uh, they can give it to Marcus Smart. He could run the offense. They give it to Jalen Brown. He can run the offense. They give it to Jason Tatum. He can run the offense. You pass it to them, they'll just go. Uh, Robert Williams, even though he's not in, he is an energy guy. He will run around and make Joel Embiid tired. And I said this, James Harden, it's important for him to show up. Tyrese Maxey, it's important for him to show up. Um, fake J. Cole, it's important for him to show up because they will run Joel Embiid. I don't think that... I'm glad he brought this up because I feel like that's a slept on thing. Yes, Joel Embiid is bigger than everybody. He's probably stronger than everybody. But that's also a weakness because he's probably going to get more tired than everybody all that weight on him will affect knees ankles uh hips those type of things and having to guard a um having to run because that's how the celtics i think that that's how they would play a, a, against a team like um like the 76 or same thing with the bucks run they ass and i think that you'll beat them but and Embiid is going to do what he does. Even when he's playing bad, he'll he'll get you at least 20 something. That is when the guards have to show up. That's all. Tatum and Brown, one or the other if I'm skipping ahead. Along with Smart, Doc Rivers, we have seen he loves to go small because it's a lack of trust there with Paul Reed and Montrez Harrell. He moved PJ Tucker to the five. What I'm saying is, is that you have very, very little margin of error when it comes down to playing the Milwaukee Bucks in the interior with the Philadelphia, when it comes for, to the Philadelphia 76ers. That's what I'm saying, because Bobby Portis, he could have a big night. Brooke Lopez could have a big night. So can Giannis. But I will say this, if I'm the Milwaukee Bucks and I'm the Boston Celtics, we're sitting up here talking about who Philly should be fearing the most. They should be fearing Philly, to be honest with you, because this team have got an identity on both ends of the floor, and they're peaking at the right time. Wow. And I haven't seen this James Harden since the Rockets days. And I'm not talking about his scoring. I'm talking about him being efficient. James Harden has been sensational. Let's get that out the way. James Harden has reminded us that he is a star in this league and is to be respected. That's number one. We'll see what Maxie does. I like Maxie as a starter better than coming off the bench. Me too. I give major props to Philly, winners of eight streak in the NBA right now. I get number two seed in the Eastern Conference as we speak. Here's the one thing that we have to pay attention to. Once the playoffs arrive, Perk, because of the success we've seen them enjoy in the regular season, at some point in time, they're going to have to answer that call. Since the process began years ago, they have not been to a conference finals. That has to change. It's just that simple. And I said that at the beginning of the video. This is an important year for the 76ers. They need to be successful. Conference finals and above. I've said this too. Conference finals and above is success, in my opinion. If you get to the conference finals and you are um, playing well in the conference finals and you don't get swept, that's a successful season, in my opinion, for teams such as the Bucks, Celtics, 76ers, Nuggets, Lakers, Clippers, those high, uh, high winning teams, those great teams. Those teams have great players on them. That is where that they need to be shooting for. That's a successful season, in my opinion, when it comes to these types of teams. They need to do this now. Or it will be another stain on this trust the process, trust the process 76ers team. I said this before he got on here and said it because I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Because I know 
that's what the 76ers need to do. But that's everything. Um, check out the links down below. I posted some more gaming content on my gaming channel. That will be linked below. Um, as well as check out the TikTok. I post there daily. Um, definitely, definitely check that out. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace.